One of the first things that happens when a person is awakened to the God Self that they are, you lose all sense of condemnation and, and wrong and of being wrong uh, in yourself. Um, it's a true experience of being free from condemnation because as the God Self, you essentially are God and there is no outside God, no outside judge that could potentially condemn you. I know that is written into Christian scripture, but without the experience, you can never find it. You can never see it in the scriptures because you see it as one that is separate from God. And the conscious separation from God will simply always invite condemnation, will always invite that eye in the sky type uh, feeling or the Holy Spirit looking over your shoulder and convicting you of what you're doing wrong. Um, it's hard to explain in a linear way. You would have to be standing in my shoes and truly experience oneness, the unified, one absolute God self that you are. Only when you're standing in the shoes of God, metaphorically speaking, is all judgment and condemnation eliminated because there is no power higher than yourself that could condemn you. And as a result of that, there is nothing and no one to condemn you for your actions. You're also raised into a higher frequency, a higher vibration that align more with divinity, that align more with your God self. Um, you could never be a thief. You could never be a liar. You could never be a murderer. You could never hate in the high vibrations of the God self. That is uh, the true God self. That is the the um, the soul realization of the divine soul. If one were to take on and claim God self for their ego, you would become the biggest tyrant, the liar and the cheater and the manipulator. That is not the same thing. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about conscious, the consciousness of God as you and uh, I've never experienced anything like that in Christianity. I've never experienced anything like it while I held on to the relation status, relationship status with God, of me relating with God and to God as my Father, as my uh, Lord as an authority above me. See, when you have a separated father, the potential for him punishing and disciplining you still exists. And because that potential still exists, you still have potential for fear. You still have potential for concern. You still have potential for anxiety. Even if you know that your father loves you, but if you take the example, the template of our earthly fathers, even though they loved us and love us, there's always the potential for discipline, for correction. That you might be doing something wrong and you're going to get a spanking. And there is a, an element of anxiety that uh, exists with that. 
And it is true with our relationship with God as our Father. In the very background of our mind, there is still the potential. What if he finds something worth of, worthy of discipline in me? What if there will be a judgment? What if he finds a shadow in me, right? That will always be there, even though you are all cozied up to the idea that God is loving, a loving Father. By default, the template of father-child, of the father-child relationship, always entails the potential for punishment. That's just the way it is set up. That's just the way we learned it in this earth life. And we subconsciously project it on God, even though we're not conscious of it, even though we deny it. That is always there in the dynamic. That happens and, and remains as long as we have an authority that is over us, over us, over us, above us. But in the consciousness of oneness, that you are God, that anxiety and that fear and that vibration melts away. You won't need a disciplinarian when you are in the consciousness of God's self. I hope that makes sense. I hope I can encourage you to be open to the idea and the experience. It'll change your life in more even a greater way than it has already changed.